Hello and welcome back to the Battle Wagon. In my previous video, I evaluated space units as a turn one play. This Leia deck is a direct result of that analysis, and while she has been occasionally popping up at premier events, I've not seen anyone cover its core principles or strategy. After showing you the deck list, I'm going to recap the highlights from my previous video and demonstrate the core card combinations. After explaining Leia's strengths over Sabine, I'll make some suggestions for substitutions, sideboard, and how to start this deck on a budget. Stay until the very end for some tips on how to counter their core combos. I've included a deck list link in the doobly-doo, and honestly, at first glance, it looks rather uninspiring. There's no legendaries at all, instead focusing on lesser rarities that come directly from Value Town. These cards combine for high-tempo play that will keep your opponent on the back foot. Early Heroism spaceships outperform nearly every neutral and villainy ship currently in the game. Space units with 2 power and 3 health have a complicated trading pattern which can be a huge liability without intervention from other cards. The Green Squadron A-Wing is an auto-include for red heroism. For the full details, check out the description for my previous video. The core strategy of this deck lies in the first two turns. You'll want to start the game with a solid 2-drop, such as Unit Sabine, Battlefield Marine, Alliance X-Wing, or, ideally, the Green Squadron X-Wing. Then, with your three resources on turn two, play a wing leader and start putting on the pressure. The two experience tokens means that your A-wing is now completely immune to most of the ways your opponent might try to deal with it. In fact, wing leader is so important to your strategy that you should mulligan if you didn't get one in your opening hand. The dream is to have a wing leader and A-wing, but there are enough two drops that it should be easy enough to find a solution. If you didn't get a wing leader, your backup plan is to play Fleet Lieutenant, which has the added benefit of attacking with your space unit, meaning you'll likely be able to claim initiative this round. The tertiary plan is to protect the ground unit with an echo base defender. By now, you should have 5 damage on their base, 4 if you're resorted to starting with an X-Wing. Turn 3 has two options, depending on your cards. You can either start turn with Leia's ability right away, then play K2SO for a total of 7 more base damage, or Play Red 3 followed by Rebel Assault for a whopping 11 damage. If you've hit Tempo, Leia's appearance on turn 4 can often mean you've won the game with damage and actions to spare. In fact, in a perfect scenario, you could use Leia's Leader ability right away, with an A-Wing and Red 3 for a total of 25 damage having been dealt so far, having only played 4 cards. If that doesn't already finish the game, you have cards like Gorilla Attack Pod and 4 Cause I Believe in, which is actually a guaranteed 4 damage because everything's heroism. Why Leia? Well, Green Bean can and does use many of the same cards. Since leaders are in play when they are in the base zone, they simply change their type from leader to unit when deploying. This means Sabine and Leia are both defeated from Boba Fett Disintegrator, whether he was played on turn 2 or brought in with Energy Conversion Lab. Yes, Sabine does enter play a turn earlier, but that actually can be a liability. Giving your opponent a ground unit they can throw a super laser tech into can allow leaders to deploy a turn earlier. For example, once you deploy Sabine on turn 3, Boba can use ECL on a super laser technician, deploy his leader, kill Sabine, and then ready just enough resources to waylay your buffed up A-Wing. One obviously detrimental part of Sabine is that you have to use your leader action to hurt your base. Getting into a base race with your opponent can be a dangerous situation, especially since you might only have spaceships. The other downside is Sabine's leader ability is an action, and that action has to be taken instead of taking the initiative. Leia, on the other hand, has action advantage. She is able to compress her turn into fewer actions, allowing her to reliably have the initiative. This allows you to avoid key on-tempo removal, and with initiative you can attack before your opponent can play those removal, and your turn 2 wing leader buffs the A-wing out of reach of three cost removal, notably Open Fire, Power the Dark Side, and an ECL three power ship like the popular Star Viper. Initiative later in the game allows you to attack with two units as your first action, meaning you can avoid Sentinel units that might be dropped, or reliably close out the game before the opponent can respond since you're attacking with two units. My personal preference with Leia and most decks is to start with an early game focus, then pivot with sideboard and additional cards as needed. This often takes in the form of late cards, such as the Mercenary Company with Ambush and Overwhelm, which can be a sneaky way to splash some damage to the base while removing a unit at the same time. Reinforcement Walker and Home 1 are the only late-game powerhouse cards available for Command Heroism. You should try to avoid getting that late in the first place. 
Precision Fire and Spec Force Soldier are inexpensive ways to avoid Sentinels. Bright Hope provides a Space Sentinel and Card Draw, all the while resetting a Wing Leader or Fleet of Lieutenant. Wolf is a good 2-drop which prevents healing, and Disabling Fang Fighter directly counters Traitorous and Entrenched. Open Fire slots in for some targeted removal, and Tarkin Town is an option if you want the rare base, especially if you expect to face Inquisitors. Lastly, I wanted to cover some tips for dealing with this hyper-aggressive space deck. Regional Governor on the first turn with initiative allows you to say Green Squadron A-Wing. The downside is they can pivot to any ground unit or use the X-Wing instead. If you don't have initiative, make sure to name Wing Leader. Entrenched prevents an unanswered unit from attacking your base. You can even try to wait until right after they play Wing Leader. Notably, this does increase the value of a turn 1 probe droid so you can see their hand on what they're going to do. One option is to play Open Fire or Power of the Dark Side right away on turn 2. However, if you didn't start with initiative, you may have to skip your turn 1 play in order to do it. Takedown is probably the strongest card to stop the combo, as it works on units with 5 health. But you have to survive the early damage. Similarly, Traitorous is good if you can hold off for one additional turn. Hilariously, using an ECL on a turn 1 A-Wing is a viable play to take out their ship. If you have initiative on turn 2, you can ECL a 7th Fleet Defender or Consortium Star Viper. Note that two power 3 health ships actually don't do anything against this combo. Sorry, Inferno 4. Unfortunately, Bombing Run is just too slow. By the time you can play it, you are almost dead, and their buffed up turn 1 space unit doesn't even die. Disabling Fang Fighter only kills one experience token, so it can't even trade into the now 4 health space unit. I hope you enjoyed this deck spotlight and put this information to good use, either by competing with it or even using it as a practice partner. Have a wonderful day!